Welcome back, folks. You got markets continuing to climb. S&P's up a full percentage point right now. And we got our man, Teddy Kegstad, on the line, folks. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday. And, Teddy, I appreciate you getting those technical difficulties worked out. And what we're going to do, we're going to we're gonna extend the show, Teddy. We can't just cut it okay. to two minutes. It's too important of a day. If it's cool with you, sure. we'll go right through the top of the hour. And we'll just go till okay. three past, as we normally do. So give us a good nine, ten minutes, as usual, man. Um, sure. Because I appreciate you joining. It's an important day. So, so. Where do we kick things off, man, with uh, inflation, yields, the currencies? Where, what's on your mind to kick it off, Daddy? Well, it's Fed Day, so you know what? If it wasn't for the CPI number, which came out better than expected, um, which I, I think you have to really take it with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, it's a nice thing that CPI is going down in this and came out unexpected. However, it's not that big of a deal when you think, like, look at it overall. And also, you're look, right now, the media is focused on a snapshot of the last few months, being like, oh, inflation's going away, everything's working out, the Fed's going to start cutting rates soon, and what have you. That's not really the case if you look at things year over year. you know. And as far as the consumer price index, well, it's a lagging number. You know, We're starting to finally see the impact of where we were six months ago, You know, definitely three to six months ago. So what I want to tell you is that every we, we, over the past six months we've seen nothing but a rise in consumer prices okay so those numbers are going to hit us come august september right in front of the election so all this bandwagoning right now and i guarantee you the media is going to be sucking this up because they're going to expect it unemployment claims are going to come out higher tomorrow and if they do that's going to follow through on the little narrative that unemployment's going higher the fed likes that they want to see people out of work and they want to see that the cpi numbers and ppi numbers are starting to show that what they've done is helped um i think once again they're lagging the market's ahead of itself right now it's what it normally does and all we are is bouncing we we set we bounced off the bottom of a range or the upper band of a range that we've been in for most markets right now so we're having an exacerbated move because think about it it's fed day nobody's doing anything so that means that the order book probably just got ran through off the numbers so i think the rally you're getting it's not because the number is so surprising it's really just because of the market environment today I appreciate the take. It is interesting looking at the market. Even, you know, the 10-year, of course, we have yields pulling back, as you mentioned, um, on the CPI number. But all we did was move back to pretty much right where we were coming into the hot jobs number. So it's interesting how the narrative can shift over the course of two to three days, right? It's like we come into the Correct. jobs number. Oh, my goodness, more jobs than I think it was something like Bloomberg had. Um they got 72 economists they poll. Nobody had a number of 272,000, man. Everybody was on the downside. How do you do that? Not even one person is, is like mm -hmm. a little bit to the upside of a little bit of risk. And then by Wednesday, we take it all back. And we got a 10-year yield right now of 4.3%. And I say to myself, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying, okay, so I look at things as a risk-reward parameter as a trader. And I say, okay, the market's pricing in the cuts that we need more data for so where's your risk well the risk is that maybe we don't get that data right that that somehow right. if it's pricing in because there's there's no way we're getting more than one to two cuts this year how would that happen right. well the economy would just have to go to absolute dire i mean falling i don't think that's going to happen thankfully so mm -hmm. then where's the risk well we need a lot more data to line up to where the market is, which I find so interesting, because the 10-year yield of 4.3, that's quite a low number when you look at where we are, mm -hmm. when you look at the dot plots, all that stuff, so I found it interesting. But even on the 10-year on the chart, I pull it up just right back to where we were on Friday, and it only takes two or three days for the narrative just to shift completely, which I found right. remarkable in the I same way. I agree with you 100%. And once again, we're in a tight range. Like If you look at the currencies, the yen... Is not reacting Ooh, very much yeah. at all. It's been it's been in the sideways trade. You know, yeah. crude is rail crude is railing big time. So you're gonna tell me that crude stays where it's at or even starts to go higher over the rest of the summer that come August, people are gonna believe that core inflation is going down when everything is costing them much more money. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna fool the people that much with that, you know. So and you the, gotta look yeah. at the currencies like that too. Like when when the yen and the Swiss are really tight in their range off of this kind of a number. That's why I said this is an exacerbated move because it's Fed Day. What markets are, are the computers looking at? They're looking at the interest rates. They're not really looking at the currency so much, you know, except for maybe the yeah. big ones like the euro and the pound, which have moved. The New Zealand and the Australian, they've, they've been stretching their legs right now on those moves, you know. But I, like I said, I'd be careful with the follow through because what's going to support it, you know? And there's such a reaction off of nothing once again, what's going to support that follow through, you know? 
Hey, some of the, and I didn't follow too closely, but I saw they had elections over in Europe, right? And there was some movement over there. You have France calling an election. Does mm-hmm. that play into how you're looking at the euro at all? And I, I, you know, I really didn't dig too deeply into it, but I was seeing headlines everywhere Sunday night. One of my best friends lives in Switzerland himself, so he was talking about some mm-hmm. of those elections in Europe. Um, did any of that throw any flux into what you're looking for, whether it's a euro or, or kind of the action over there? I think it's it's the it's the beginning of something that if the if the mo if that movement can continue, it's very strong for the euro and also the EU gotcha. economy because right now the EU economy is collapsing. The Green New Deal is yeah. crushing them. You know, energy yeah. prices are soaring because they're so dependent and they won't do what they need to do. You know, yeah. so I mean the the German industrial complex now is running at like you know sixty percent maybe at best of what they were just a year ago you know yeah. and let alone two years ago when we were in a p- pandemic if you will so i mean if sure. you look at that their output capacity is decreasing there's complete social unrest and they're they're, they're out of money they hand you have no money when you have a shrinking economy how are you going to issue debt you know, I yeah. mean, so yeah. that's the other thing, too. They can cut rates all they want, you know, to inflate prices, but you're not going to have any liquidity, you know, and then you're looking at a really horrible spread developing between your short and long term rates if they start to pull that kind of game. But I do think politically, nice. if it gains fire and they can get more of these people with common sense back into the government, especially the EU besides Germany, then you might start to see a balancing out of things in Europe and actually see their economy start to stabilize, which would be strong for especially the euro and even the Swiss. Because right now, the Swiss is the only currency that's strong there. The euro has been holding it. It's been in a range trade, you know, and it's only because our dollar is pretty much in a range trade as well, you know. Yes. So, and, and I think that politically, you know, if this was to swing back the way it was, you know, then that would be really detrimental to the euro. Um, but this is something that could, if this continues over the next six months to a year, and let me tell you something, political pressure is on, and they're different to their politicians over there, like, when they, there, there are people are very quiet, but once they start get, raising their arms and their voices, um, the politicians are running scared because they come right to their front door, literally. <laughs> They're right on their front door, you know. So, I mean, and that, that changes things when all of a sudden, you know, your security doesn't matter and you have, you know, 10,000 people in front of your mansion, you know. So, sure. I mean, we'll see what hey, happens. How about – you talked about crude, so quite a pop just in the last you know few mm-hmm. days, but we're, we're still under $80. I'm not sure if you heard me talking about, pretty interesting, the IEA coming out saying we might reach peak oil demand by 2030. Meanwhile, production continuing to rise over that time, and they put out a number, man, that we might, and I'm going long term, man, it doesn't matter for this trading, but it is interesting when you just look at you know our own production in the U.S., right, versus the mm-hmm. Middle East. Production continuing to rise. Thankfully, we produce a lot of oil ourselves now, not as reliant on the Middle East, but but um, they were talking about maybe, you know, by 2030, we might have a surplus on a global scale of 8 million barrels a day. And I just found myself saying, geez, you know, maybe that's part of the reason that on a longer term basis, you might face some heat about going to the upside. Because, boy, you know, you got a lot of unrest. In the- oh, all right. We are wrapping up. But what do you think of crude at 79 bucks? <laughs> I, I, I like it. I like the bounce that we had over the past week. You know, just like I was saying a couple weeks ago, I think we found good support. And we're right back into that nice. little range. Nice. Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. We'll look forward to talking to you next Thanks, week. Tommy. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex report at TFNN. Thanks, Teddy. Stay tuned for Basley's up next. Have a great day, everybody.